and revised him. Now watch this in Philippians. Paul goes on. But whatever gains to me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them garbage that I may gain Christ and he and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but but that which is through the faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith. I want to know Christ. Yes, to know the power of his resurrection and a participant and participation in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, and so somehow attaining to the resurrection from the dead. Now, I have already obtained all this, or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, Forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead, I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Revised. Revision. Paul is revised from Saul to Paul. When Christ steps into your life, he will revise you. Leads me to my next point of forgiveness. The Lord's grace forgives. Once we come to Jesus and we're revised, we need to be re- forgiven for what we've done, for our sins. Think about what Saul did. He needed to be forgiven. Follow with me in Acts 9, 10. In Damascus, there was a disciple named Ananias. Now, Ananias means the gracious one or the Lord is gracious. So in Damascus, there was a disciple named Ananias. The Lord called him in a vision. Ananias, yes, Lord, he answered. The Lord told him, go to the house of Judas on Straight Street and ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul, for he is praying. In a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hands on him and restore his sight. So watch how the Holy Spirit's working here. So the Holy Spirit's actually talking to Ananias. At the same time, he's... Saul, who's now blind, cannot see anything, sees this vision of Ananias in his head. Sees this vision of Ananias coming and places his hand on, hands on him and restoring his sight. So the, a couple of things are happening here that we have to realize this. That we, Paul is an apostle. Now, we learned before in, in this series of Acts of the Apostles that to be, to be an apostle, you have to have seen the risen Lord. And so here we see Paul has seen the risen Lord because... He talks to him, and then Ananias confirms it. Now watch this. Lord, he goes, um, you know, I've heard a lot about this guy. He's scared. Right? There, there's a buzz going on in Damascus right now because they know this guy from Saul, this guy from Tarsus is coming after him. Saul from Tarsus is coming after him. Everybody in Damascus knows of the way. They're like, watch out. Y- y- y'all better watch out because here comes Saul. He's going to come persecute us. So the buzz is already out there. And so here's Ananias talking to to Jesus, and he goes, I've heard many reports about this man and all the harm he's done to your holy people in Jerusalem. So think about that. I mean, the church is just brand new, and you got somebody like Saul just trying to take it down. And it's so so much as as it's scattered, as we learn how it's scattered after the first persecution, when after the first martyr, when Stephen was martyred, just a chap, chapter earlier, and Paul was right there. Saul was right there. And then it scattered, and it started building. And so now here's Saul. Oh, my Lord, it's scattered from Jerusalem. Now it's going all these other places. So he, he wants to go and find them in other places. So here he goes from Jerusalem to Damascus. So in this vision that, that both of them saw, that Saul saw and, and that Ananias heard, he says, so anyway, finish, finishing up. And he has come here with authority from the chief priest to arrest anyone who's called in your name. And then the Lord, of course, knows. He goes, but Ananias, go. This man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings and to the people of Israel. 
And the very next line is so important. 16, 9, 16. And I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. And we know the end of the story. We know how much he suffered for his name. And here's the very beginning of it. That Christ is telling Ananias, go, this is my chosen instrument. Now, step into your life for a second. I believe we're all God's chosen instrument. And God's going to step into your life right now as you ask for forgiveness, as you revised your life. And you're going to be his chosen instrument. But I think we all can agree on verse 16 that we all must suffer as well. We're going to suffer. Believing in Christ and, and, and being saved does not mean it's, it's going to be a, a glorious, a wonderful, easy walk. It, ma matter of fact, it's going to get harder. Because at that point, when we're saved, when we, st when we just walk with Jesus all the time, the evil one's going to step up and it's going to be very upset about it. And he's going to create havoc in your life. And we've seen havoc being created just in our own church and little things that we've done. We can see havoc created throughout your lives. Y'all have seen it throughout your life. You've seen it throughout your children's life, your grandchildren's lives. We know that this is going to happen, that, that we must suffer. But when the Lord steps into your life, he will revise you. He will forgive you and he'll give you strength to handle that. Brings me to Galatians 1, when Paul is called by God. And friends, this, is, this right here is a textbook program for Christians. So let's think about this for a second. We're not saved. We go through this revision, we go through this forgiveness, and then we get saved. What Paul went through is a conversion that we can look at all through all Christians. That this is a, a conversion story of Christians. You go from not being a Christian, from you're going on your own life. Now, Paul thought he was doing God's will. Paul thought that he was called to go find these people of the way that, that that's what his calling was just as we're called to to the lord to call to the pulpit we're called to preach his his his, his name and and we're called to love and show people his love paul thought he was called to kill to murder to arrest that's what he thought his calling was and then all of a sudden it hit him now watch this out of Galatians, it reads, I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that the gospel I preach is not of human origin. I did not receive it from any man, nor was I taught it. Rather, I received it by the revelation from Jesus Christ. For you have heard of my previous way of life in Judaism, how intensely I persecuted the church of God and tried to destroy it. I was advancing in Judaism beyond many of my own age among many people. I was extremely zealous for the traditions of my father. So he was a Jew of all Jews, a Roman citizen, was taught by his family of all the Jewish heritage. He, he knew about the law. And here he is. He's advancing in Judaism, uh, being more zealous than other people. And he was extremely for the traditions of his father. But when God, but when God who set me apart from my mother's womb and called me by grace, was pleased to reveal his son in me so that I might preach him among the Gentiles. Then, goes on, after three years, I went up to Jerusalem and got acquainted with Cyphus and stayed with him for 15 days talking about being with Paul. I mean, I'm sorry. Talking about being with Barnabas and what happened here. So I assure you, going on, before God, that what I am writing to you is no lie. He was ravaging murderous threats. He was called by God. And then now he becomes one of the greatest apostles of all time. The Lord's grace saves. Follow, follow me here in Acts 9, 17. Then Ananias went to the house and entered it. Placing his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Watch this for a second. 
acts of grace. Revised, forgiven, and now saved. So here's this man who Ananias is just telling Jesus that, hey, this guy's coming after us. He's ravaging murderous threats against us. He's done all this stuff against us. And now he, he, he listens to Jesus. And the first thing he does when he sees Saul is he calls him brother. 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 Loving. Grace. And he, he confirms what we know that, that Paul saw Jesus again. He says, whom you saw on the road as you were coming here, he sent me to you so that you can see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And maybe something like scales fell from Saul's eyes and he could see again. He got up and was baptized. And after taking some food, regained his strength. And Saul spent several days in, with the disciples in Damascus. Salvation is an act of grace. It's a gift from God. God gave Saul, who became Paul, this gift. Paul surely wondered why God would award him this gift of salvation. Think of what he's been through as the persecutor of the church, the most unlikely candidate. Surely there are more people deserving. You know, he could have gone, hey, Peter. You know, Peter was still on the scene, was a great disciple, apostle. Why did God choose Paul? You know, if we really think about it, it's because it's, we can see ourselves in Saul and Paul. We, not necessarily as bad as he was, but we can all see this conversion. We can all see this in, in our children's lives, in our grandchildren's lives, in our friends' lives. We can see this when friends who are acting like Saul, not part of the way, and then they had this conversion, and now they're part of Jesus, and they just talk about Jesus. And a lot of times, if, if somebody's really hurt you in your life, and they come back at you and go, hey, I'm changed. You know, I, I'm, I love Jesus. You know, I'm, you, you won't believe him. You know, you've been, you put me through so much pain. I, 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 don't, I still can't fathom you being saved and converged and revised. And that's what the, the apostles, when, when Paul came back to them, they, they were like, no way. This guy can't be a part of us. He, look at what he's done to us. There's no way we're going to let him in. But he, Paul didn't even think about that. He just preached Jesus. Now, God chose Paul because he wanted to. God chose me because he wanted to. God chose you because he wanted to. That's the reason. God wants you, part of his kingdom. He wants you to, to be filled with his mercy and his grace, to be filled with his, God's unmerited favor, to be free of any pain and be filled with kindness, be filled with grace. Watch this in 2 Corinthians. It reads, by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace to me was not without effect. When we come in here every Sunday, we need to have a change. His grace to me is, was not without an effect. It, it affected me. It changed me. His grace changed me. His grace changed Paul. Paul writes in Galatians, but God called me by his grace. First Timothy it reads, the grace of our Lord was poured out on me abundantly along with the faith and love that we are in Jesus Christ. We are saved because of God's grace. In Ephesians 1, he writes, for he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In the love he predestined us to be adopted as his sons through Jesus Christ, in accordance with his pleasure and will, to, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. God's grace of salvation is a gift, and we're all given that today. We're all given that today. Even sinners who are putting out murderous threats, persecuting like Saul, have the opportunity to experience the grace of God. 
Finally, friends, the Lord's grace revives us, forgives us, and saves us. Reverend Dr. T.D. Hughes puts it this way. God picks the worst of us and gets the best out of us. He picks the worst of us, but he gets the best out of us. You have to have faith that whatever I am or have been does not mean what I can become in God. Let me repeat that again. You have to have faith that whatever you've been or are does not mean that you, what you can become in God. God has this revision. All you need to do is ask for, for forgiveness and he will save you. Grace and salvation by God's initiative is to stop you in your tracks and blind you by his grace. Also to stop and blind any adversary that's coming after you. Think about that. Anybody that's coming after you, God is going to stop as well. Grace and salvation becomes because God's grace of forgiveness, God's will, God will forgive you when you ask for forgiveness. He'll make you weak, but then he'll build you up and make you stronger than ever. Think about Saul, as strong as possibly could be, on the road to Damascus, gets blinded by Christ and becomes as weak as you possibly can be. He can't see. He needs help to walk into Damascus. He needs help to get to Damascus. Here he is in his murderous threats, ravaging, going as hard as he can to Damascus. They say it's a four to six day walk. He didn't care. And then he's close to it. He gets blinded. Can't see. All of a sudden, all this strength becomes totally weak. Think about that in our lives when everything's just going great and all of a sudden we just get hit by God. And we become weak because we were not walking in his footsteps. But this grace and salvation is for all of us. It's for sinners like Saul. It's for you and I. Finally, friends, if you experience salvation, praise the Lord. If not, I ask you to come and ask him to come into your life with the power as he did with Paul. Ask him to come into your life, not because you're such a great person, but because you're a sinner that needs a savior. We need to experience the grace of God. Finally, just as John Newton wrote, this remarkable event when he had penned amazing grace, the conversion in his life that he was blind, but now he can see. We all have the same opportunity to feel the Lord's grace. Have that conversion that Saul did to Paul, the conversion that John Newton did to write Amazing Grace. And to feel finally, friends, how much the Lord is gracious. Let me pray. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for the scripture text. I ask everyone to feel your comfort. Don't be afraid. God's Holy Spirit brings you healing and comfort and hope. You're being prepared to serve God right now in so many ways. We must rejoice in God's Holy Spirit. We must ask the Lord just to fill us and revise us and forgive us and save us. And all God's people said, amen.